Hello! In this training, we'll go over how to utilize the reporting feature in the Supervisor or Manager view. The first thing I want to do is I want to come up here to my blue bar in the left hand corner and click the arrow down and make sure that I'm in Supervisor or Manager view. Once I've switched to Supervisor or Manager view, you will see a reporting tab down here at the very bottom on the left hand column of your iSolved picture. I'm going to go ahead and click the reporting tab. The next thing that you'll see under reporting is my reports and my reports queue. I'm going to go ahead and click on my reports. Here are a list of reports that are available for managers and supervisors um, to view and these reports will help you um, manage timesheets and view for errors and make have better reporting capabilities in knowing what you're looking at. So the first one that you can do is alerts um, report and you can run that by a payroll or by a date range. So um, you'll need to look at the name and then also the report type. The next one is the hours detail, and again, that can be run for date range as well as um, by payroll. And why we would want to run an hours de detail report would be um, for project codes or making sure that people are within their 375. Again, employees will be able to view that on their own but just going behind them and checking to make sure that they're um, staying within their 375 per quarter. The time card report, this can be ran by date range or by payroll run. The time card report is the report that's going to pull all of your time card reports for that pay period, so you do not have to go in individually and click on those time card reports. So what you can do is before you start checking off timesheets, um, and verifying them is come to my reports and um, you'll want to click by you want to click the time card report by date range because obviously those that time that time card has not been processed through payroll yet so you want to click the time card report date range click a date so I will click from the last pay period and then the pay period ended on Saturday and then I want to click my pay group and you do have some time card policies here you can click those filters if you'd like to utilize them you also have some labor level so if you want the project code, project code included any of the career hours included, you can click that. You can also click the employee status, make sure it's active. And then down here, you can click, um, it comes in a PDF format. So the next thing I want to do is go to generate report. And it'll tell me your report request has been submitted. And then I can go to my reports queue. And you'll just click refresh. And you may have to click refresh a couple times. And you can see the report is here. So I can click view report. And here is my time card report for all of my employees who worked in that time period. Now, this is a test environment, so I only have one test employee, but if you have 10 or 30 employees, you will have 10 or 30 time card reports in this report for you to look at. Once you, you can either, and you also can come down here, you can save, print, whatever you want to do with these time card reports is up to you. So I'm just going to exit out here. Another card, another report that I generated earlier um, was the detail hours report. And we talked about that. I'll just kind of show you what that looks like a little bit.
it pulls it up in an Excel format and it's going to give you the detailed hours export. So if I had an employees, it would um, give me the employee number, the name, supervisor, the manager, the day, the date, the start, end time. It gives you basically the time card report in an Excel format. Okay, I'm just going to click out of that. And I'm going to come back over here to the left hand side and click my reports. Other reports that you can run are the time card mileage report. And this is going to let you run um, mileage. It is run by pay date. So it's basically time that has been run through the payroll system. You also have these verification reports. And you can run the verification report by date range or by payroll. So we'll, um, I'll do a date range because the current pay period has not been processed to the payroll system yet. So I'll pick my date range. The pay period started the 24th and it ended on the 6th. Click my pay group, my employee status, and then you can pick um, your options and it's going to be in Excel. I'm going to generate that report and then I'm going to come over here to go to my reports queue. And I'm just going to go ahead and refresh. There you see it's generated. I can view my report. And now you can see um, your employee. You can see that uh, the employee verified it, the date and time, the supervisor verified it, the manager has not verified it. Now again, this report can be helpful in seeing if your employees have verified, but what's most important is just going through that, um, going through, if you come back up to your employee self-service and clicking on my dashboard, and clicking on the employee punch status. This is actually the, and using these filters to bring up your employees, this is actually what's going to help you to be able to determine who has worked within a pay period, who's actually entered time, because in the verification report, it's gonna pull all of your employees. So regardless if they've worked in this pay period or not, it's gonna say not verified. So we're encouraging everyone to use the employee punch status um, mechanism to determine which employees have worked in a specific pay period. But just going back down here to my reporting um, and clicking on my reports, you can definitely utilize all of these reports. If there's something specific that you would like to report on, just let your budget accounting technician know and we'll see about getting that report added. This concludes our training in the report tab of iSoft.